Welcome. Uh, in this video, I wanted to talk about an important, necessary, an important and necessary uh, process in X-ray generation, in particular with X-ray tubes, and that's the process of rectification. Essentially, we are converting AC current, well, AC uh, alternating current, to DC direct current. Why do we need to uh, perform this? Well, the reason is in an X-ray tube, in particular inside the insert, electrons must flow in one direction. They must always flow from the cathode or from the filament all the way to our target, the anode. Electrons never flow, should never flow the other way from the anode to the cathode. They must always go from the cathode to the anode. However, the way we receive electricity or uh, a supply electricity in our uh, hospitals is in the form of a AC, that is current that is going back and forth, current that is alternating its direction. Because of this, we need to have a way of converting the incoming AC from our power source into a DC which we can use for our X-ray tubes. So the point is, in the context of X-ray tubes, the process of rectification is necessary. Again, rectification for our purposes is going to be the process of converting alternating current to direct current. Now, before we get into that, um, it's worth mentioning um, that the way we will uh, explain or we will carry out rectification is by using diodes. Diodes are basically, you could think of them as electrical valves. They only allow electricity to flow in one way and they resist the flow of electricity in the opposite direction. So just like you may have a door which opens one way um, but it won't open another way. Okay, so that's what diodes are. They are small electric electronic devices that um, resist the flow of electricity one way but allow electricity to flow in another direction. Okay, so before we get into um, uh, into the exact process of how we um, uh, rectify, it's worth noting that um, typically people think, well, in engineers, I should say, they think of the flow of current as going from the positive side of the battery or of the source to the negative side. Um, that is what we call conventional current. But in our case, it is not meaningful to consider this because we are interested in the flow of electrons. Electrons will always flow from the negative side of the terminal to the positive side. That is the path of electron flow. Conventional current flow follows path one, but we are interested in the flow of electrons, so we will consider the flow of electrons from the negative to the positive. Okay. Um, now, let's consider what a diode does. A diode will allow electrons, or maybe, let me backtrack, the symbol for a diode looks like this, kind of like a play button or a forward button on your music player. So conventionally, this play button points in the direction in which conventional current flows or is allowed to flow. Current, conventional current can flow in that way, but the diode, remember it's a valve, it will impede any flow in, that, in the backward direction. So a diode will allow conventional current to flow that way, but it will impede it from flowing that way. But we are not interested in conventional current, we are interested in electron flow. And electrons flow opposite to current, to conventional current. So a diode for us will be a device which allow electrons to flow in that direction, opposite to the play button or the forward button. 
So electrons on a diode will be allowed, are permitted to flow this way, but they will not be allowed to flow the other way. So I hope that's not too confusing. Um, but let's go on. Now, imagine you have some kind of a circuit. Um, you have a power source and you have a voltmeter. This thing here measures how much current or how, what the voltage being supplied here is. Because this is an alternating current, it's going to have a signal that is up this way. Electricity is going to flow one direction. Let's say, for instance, red means clockwise. Then blue would mean counterclockwise. So that means in this circuit, we're going to have electricity flowing this way. Or we could think of it as electrons flowing this way. And then at a certain point, because this is alternating current, it's going to switch direction and flow the other way. What are we going to measure when we have such an input? Say counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise. Well, because there's no rectification, nothing um, is impeding the flow of electrons here. Well, what we're going to read out here is exactly what we input. We're going to end up with the same signal as we put in. Okay. So remember, red means clockwise. I think that's the convention I said. Let's say red clockwise. Let me just say red means clockwise. And then uh, blue is going to be anti-clockwise, just for uh, demonstration purposes. Clockwise. OK, I think that's going to be a little more consistent now. Blue is anti-clockwise, and red means clockwise. Great. Um, now let's consider, how can we uh, correct this or rectify this? Well, we can rectify this by introducing diodes. Diodes. So when it's red, remember, electrons are going to be flowing clockwise. So electrons are going to be flowing this way. But notice, uh, when electrons get over here, what's going to happen? Notice, this is the play button. Electrons are not allowed.